Good afternoon from New York. Well, let me, uh, I'm going to give you the title first. I'll run the IMC, Intermind Communication, Philosophy, the Love Flow, The Impact of Trauma, and Social Institutions and Your Love Life. Okay. So, I'm having some technical difficulties here with the boom video production. Um, boomer video. Yeah, <laughs> everything happens at once, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and if it's inconvenient, you can count on it happening. Anyway. All right. Let's go with uh, intercommunion. Uh, inner mind communication. Um, philosophy is about the love flow of needs being met and uh, understanding uh, that uh, any time that you can meet needs it's a blessing that it's part of the flow, and uh, it's part of the investment you have to make. That goes into the theory of trade and so on. Um, you know, you need all of those forms of uh, perspective, uh, compassion, where you will trade without expecting back except uh help says for the good and uh government um that's the church the first thing i mean church instant extended family organizations and uh could be a local bar for you but um there's the government that's all about objective and the thing should be. Uh, objectivity helps you, uh, you know, make a better plan. You improve your life. You understand your life and improve it. And that's the kind of comfort you get from that. That's the mentors in your life and your own inner counsel. The other is communication between your dramatic self and your inner caregiver. But all of these are you. The counselor, the caregiver, the dramatic self, the kid in you. It's all of you and exists in your imagination. That's uh, the mythology. And up above that, useful mythology. Up above that, we have the uh, uh, we have the uh, the inner artist, and uh, that's a part of you that is the imaginer of all your imagination, your higher power, your brain. These are some of the names I give it. Um, and it is that part of you that enjoys your whole story of your life, the whole movie of your life, if you will, 
uh, no matter what's going on. It calls you to your higher virtue. It calls you to be a hero for love, a love flow in your life. Yeah. And uh, that means you take on many different perspectives. And uh, that's where creativity is born. And so that's like the media as an institution in society. So we're dealing with uh, a balance between these influences and uh, that balance means there's a freedom of voice and, uh, and equality of, uh, of uh, power between all of these perspectives none of them are drowning out the others if you have the institution of church taking or you have a theocracy, it doesn't work. If you have uh, government doing everything, that's uh, either state capitalism sometimes. Um, if it's uh, totally socialist, uh, that's what a lot of people are calling communist. Communism is just a dream that everybody's uh, just working in harmony and sharing everything they got. So, um, yeah. And they, and they shouldn't be. So, uh, that, that's a nightmare. You usually these countries call themselves governments. Uh, but government in charge? Bad idea. It uh, takes them forever to come up with it. Uh, they will come up with excessive laws, mostly to protect their position of power. Um, not a good idea. Not very efficient. And the uh, business is the is is like the dramatic uh, <laughs> the dramatic self in you, in, which is all about trade. Uh, but the trade for a child race is mostly just trading need but they are an investment uh, every time you need anybody else's uh, needs uh, it's kind of an investment so in, investing is good those that need help uh, if we help them that that investment radiates outward in ourselves and our attitudes and in the person and the people that person needs so helping those who cannot help back, um, it's valuable. Sometimes in, in the case of family, the most important thing is children. And trade is the center of everything. Um, so the trading partners um, need to be treated right. And that's business. Business is all the trading partners, not just those with a lot of money, not just uh, larger organized forms of trade, unions or businesses or corporations. Every individual, every trading partner is part of that institution of business. And they all need to be treated fairly. Right? 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 For a second. Uh, but that alone, this trade without the influences of compassion and, and objectivity, you, know, you can have all the bad, but you can't have everything. You know? um, that needs to be there, but it needs to serve the people. That's democracy. It needs to serve all the people. And, uh, yeah, it's like church needs to serve all of you and be a form of extended family, not a, not a form of uh, uh, segregation of some kind, which often they are sometimes. 
all the rich people over here, poor people over there. Those are the one, one shade of skin color over here and another over there. They like that. Expand that comfort zone. And expanding the comfort zone is increasing the love flow. We are looking at uh, seeing things from the media point. Well, you know, judge that with your objectivity and your compassion. Why? Maybe these things are mixed together. They have to be. Um, in each institution, all four of these things are represented. They have to be. But their main idea or impression is one of them. And that's what goes on in your internal imagination that helps you to heal. Um, the impact of trauma, uh, well, it, can, it can upset the balance. Um, it Because uh, these things together uh, ferret out the real needs. Yeah? And you got all these things working together, all these perspectives. Uh, it, it tends to, to hone out what are the real needs here, what, what do we need to take care of, well, what, what is uh, possible and what is, what is uh, necessary, and uh, yeah, so, so, and what is instinctive? What you know? What you were born with in your as a person? Those needs. And it gets these things open up those things, and uh, all at the same time, when you have these kind of forms of empathy, it increases your connection to virtue, from your compassion, goodness, from objectivity, truth, from your inner artist, and himself. Art, the ability to appreciate life, all its forms, and, uh, and, and people with, with all, all their stories and whoever they are. It's the ability to stand back and vicariously enjoy everything. That's a position of, kind of a position of timelessness. Um, because you're up above this timeline, seeing yourself above. And you're looking, and you're looking at you know, things in the future and things in the past. You're seeing the dramatic person or society or whatever functioning within the, that timeline with those past concerns and future uh, hopes, dreams, and uh, needs. And, uh, and you enjoy the whole story. Uh, you know, enjoying the work. You know, uh, the artist. So, all of these things working together, aim at need, okay. But when trauma hits, it is like a force in you that over dramatizes, that takes you to a point where you are overwhelmed. Uh, in terms of feeling helpless. It's the helplessness that's a problem. If you're utterly and completely helpless around needs, feelings, and expression, then you cannot resolve those things. You cannot uh, take those things and, and grow in your forms of empathy, and, uh, your, which is to me spiritual growth. You can't do that. It's not possible. Uh, well, no, you know, the degrees, everything is, is uh, in, in, to, to a degree, uh, to the degree that you have this kind of impacts and you, you're limited. You become a little more stuck in the past, a little more selfish. And uh, why? Because these things, these needs are still pushing inside you for resolution. But at the time that they happened, the helplessness was so bad around you that uh, you had to, your, you, that force had to be generalized, like the shock of uh, something hitting like a beach ball. It's generalized. 
and it's spread out. And uh, yet the meaning in the, in the any good business is what's our meaning is still there, you can still trace it back, so it's symbolic. It's a generalized symbolic version that helps you to feel uh, sufficiently empowered. And uh, for someone who's had really tragic life, sometimes the only safe spot to get into is to be the evil yourself. And that's, that in degrees again, uh, affects everyone who has had the impact of trauma. If I was going to be um, talking about it in Christian terms, for instance, you know, it's like uh, trauma is the gateway. Of the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, well. It's certainly the great way, the great way to damage faith and love, and uh, less spiritual growth, less virtue, and uh, and uh, since you're not in touch with your own needs, but only into symbols of those needs, you're not satisfied. So you're kind of an addict. To those that symbolic defense system. So what happens when when these forms of compassion and these forms of love, compassionate, objective, and creative come? Well it begins to wear away the power of that symbolic defense structure. It, it, it's aiming at the real needs, the feelings still trapped inside you, uh, feelings trapped in helplessness. So reliving that in its helplessness helps you to be aware of the real need. Uh, and then when you finally are aware of the real need, then you realize it's a loss. And that loss it needs to be grieved and let go before you can truly forgive uh, those involved, including yourself. And uh, the next stage, of course, is repentance or um, tears of uh, remorse. And that the beautiful thing is. You know, and that's the most terrible thing to feel of all, is how you are, uh, as a social animal, a social outcast. If you're hurting other people, you're partly an outcast. You're not in the love flow. That's the biggest threat. And the last thing that you can, you can resolve you can resolve it in degrees as you've done the other things associated with various needs that are trapped in the business because of trauma. So that brings you to a uh, realization, a sadness that you put on others because you were already. Um, and the beautiful thing is that to some degree you're no longer that person. You're the person who's sad. Truly really sad. Otherwise, I mean, you're not really feeling it. Right? You know, you have a lot of these amazing transformations, usually privileges. You know. And it's just not, it's not right. It's, it sounds a little off. Yeah, people cry, but it, it doesn't move. Yet. What, are they, what are they crying about? Is it, they're in a sad moment. Um, it doesn't feel real. I mean, I've seen people that try to go back and feel things. And they, 
And then they try to say, oh, I'm going back to feel pain. Nobody goes back to feel pain. That, that is a survival memory. And symbolization of the original needs and, and situation. That's uh, not going to change willpower. You ha it has to be broken down. The symbolic defense structure has to begin to crumble. That increase in uh, real connection to data. And that's the only way. So, if you're not, and I've heard, I've heard this, you know, and you don't assume, therefore, when you're doing uh, this process, with trying to help the love level, you're not looking for something that you don't. Definitely your mind and your body and everything else says, no, that's not surviving to go there. We've been there, done that. No. So you, what you'll hear them do, you know, they'll go back. Oh, 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 oh. And then some kind of pasted on meaning. Like, you know, I think I, I might have had a past life in which I was a, a worm in hot ashes, you know. Really? Yeah. Another name for that. <laughs> but, but you know, that's, that's it's crazy. You know, you know, it's fake. It doesn't move anybody around, you know. You're not like going, oh, yeah. You're on two strips coming to the surface because it's just not there. And uh, I've seen that. And, and I think it's damaging it. It just uh, helps the defense system grow stronger, I think. Um, so, yeah, maybe bad therapy like that's better, worse than no therapy at all. Right? Um, it's like a bad haircut. No haircut at all. <laughs> Sometimes. Um... Yeah, so that understood. Um, how does it affect you? Okay. <laughs> well, that help, that painful helplessness is uh, is pain. And what do you do? You, you look for, you're addicted to symbolic struggles which help with the pain. Um, you're in pain, and uh, you're hurting. From it. Any time that uh, that that starts to surface, the real need well, is a time when you do start to feel uh, uncomfortable, and uh, like everything in you says, "No, you can't go there." And uh, so, what do you do? You look for pain to. What is it? Food? Yeah, never can have enough? Or maybe just you can't have too little. You're acting out. That's uh, using food as a pain killer. And uh, if you're looking at uh, sensual interaction, well, you're tending to be more selfish, which doesn't do very much for a partnership. And uh, that's not good for your love life. you got to care about what your partner wants. And you've got to, uh, and, you know, enjoy their enjoyment. Okay? But more than that, you know, you're looking for something that's immediate uh, pleasure, a kind of painkiller, you know, immediate relief. So, yeah, so, you people with the, 
some form of sexual addiction. Unhealthy kind of approach. That um, definitely gets in the way of your love life. You love life, you know, with, with your partner or with your children, you know. It doesn't have to be about, you know, when I say love life, I'm not just talking about that S word on the exit. You know, people divorce their partners for one thing. Who divorces their children? That, that, that's, 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 no. Most of the time they fight over the children, you know. I was like, that's a more important relationship, really. Uh, uh, who gets the kids on one day? You know? That's something, ain't it? But, um, and that hurts kids. It hurts kids. You can work it out, work it out. Could be a temporary problem with this in people with depression. It could be a temporary thing, you know. Um, work it out. It's a it's blindness, actually. Yeah. Don't you know, just want to divorce and make up things. You know, you'll never be friends again. Anyway, <clears throat> so your love one. Work on expanding the love one. Work on these different perspectives of their non communication so that you get in touch with the real needs. Let's see people who even know how, how, how to, to make you happy. <laughs> You know, the real needs, uh, even in the present, are influenced by these, uh, anything similar in the past that was on that. So, resolving these things is incredibly important for um, your love life. And, uh, you know, by now, when I say love life, I'm not isolating it to you. Partners in like in a marriage or something outside of marriage. I'm talking all the love. You know, you love life uh, with your parents, with your kids, with the world around you. you try to work on that. The only way you're going to do that is to expand your ability to have empathetic forms like objective empathy. That means objectivity, but you care. You care about the other person or even yourself. Um, compassionate empathy which is all about helping someone to express their own needs and feelings safely. And uh, creativity. This ability to have many different perspectives, to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes. Really connect. You appreciate differences in people and uh, not running around chanting you know oh if another group comes in you know then we're oh um, you know but to sick people it might feel like that you know, so if you're prejudiced, then you know that's something in the way of that love. That's in the way of creative. Hmm? 
So you expand all of these uh, these abilities and uh, in a caring way. Got most of the package. You also have to consider uh, that there are you can be traumatized before you had any sound concept in any verbal language sense. And uh, that's that's a little different. You still had the abilities of focus and in this everything in the, in the philosophy I'm talking about is related to human need. All of these practices are directly um, related to human need and feelings which are related to human need. Uh, not including wishes, not including anything. Can't have a wish. <laughs> you suffer. So, all of this is focused in that way, okay? As a, before you had these abilities to be objective and compassionate and, and uh, creative, and of course it's creative, it's in the imagination of imagination, the creator of them. But you had the ability before that to be at play in regard to your feelings and so on. And uh, the ability to express your needs and the ability to focus on. Well, focus is what develops into objectivity. And as you know, as you enter your social theory, you like your language, you gradually learn to be more objective. And uh, that's a matter of personal growth, spiritual growth. Uh, the creative, well, here you can be at play with your feelings and then play evolves into uh, creativity, the ability to create the play, to be outside of the play, to be a, a real play. Yeah, a play. Anyway, but uh, you look over, you see the, uh, the compassion. Well, what does that evolve from? Your need to express your feelings and your needs, which is what's going on inside you. Well, in society, that developed into a capacity for compassion which means a kind of sharing of those feelings, but um, not just a simple mirror, um, real compassion. That compassion evolved from your need to feel what you felt and express it. Baby cries why? Expressing its needs and its feelings. So, in the that the child becomes a, more of a, a grown-up, a little more grown, you know, it's some, someone with language, they, begin, they can begin to experience uh, slowly uh, an ability for compassion, which makes it safe for someone to have and express, to express their needs, feelings, and so on. So, what is the difference between uh, inner mind communication approach and, and what you see out there uh, in uh, therapies extant? Is that you see this pattern. And uh, you understand that, for instance, all of these approaches together is going to be more impactful. And eventually, you need all of them. But uh, how you begin, uh, well, that's, I would say that I would begin with focus. 
a kind of mindfulness on your needs, feelings, and things. And uh, there can be some benefits with that. Focus on the pain. Uh, you, you know, your mind will try to be anything. So, you know, we'll try to do. if you force the focus, then uh, I found in my experience that uh, you can better deal with pain. Because if you're running away from that pain, you're afraid of pain. Fear intensifies pain. And of course, vice versa. But um, that's why there was these. Uh, this approach in uh, childbirth where you try to separate fear and pain. And uh, that can be done with, uh, you know, a real focus on these things and, and putting yourself outside. One of the things that helps you to uh, to begin with, you start outside of these problems. It's the safe place to begin. So just focus and uh, and uh, so that you kind of know one thing from another. And uh, and for objectivity. Um, communicate as a six-year-old, your imagination of yourself as six years old, and the most thoughtful adult self. That would be your inner counselor. It's, these are the softest, easiest things. But to stay stuck in that, is that? Well, we can limit your growth. And it uh, may not uh, work out so well. So, this kind of, uh, this kind of thing, um, you know, it's, 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 can be helpful, and, uh, and it's that bigger picture that gives you all of these kinds of understanding, you know, if an understanding stops there, Maybe it's not connected to reality, but you see a pattern that uh, explains a lot of things. Maybe a little more useful. And uh, a lot of therapy sections, as I said, they will focus on bits and pieces of this. Same thing uh, in religions, bits and pieces. Um, there was uh, my father. And so this before, and then he, he uh, lost a dear lady friend, and uh, he was in grief. And another lady, uh, the, some of the people, first of all, who come up, so she's in a better place, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's a kind of creative approach, imagining something really better. And it can be helpful. But he said what really helped him most was the lady who came by and expressed her passion. All she did was touch his shoulder and in sincere tones. What was that? Permission to feel. So, yeah, all of these different approaches are heavy value and uh, help them together. They're most, most effective. Um, but entering into it, I would suggest those practices and then expand to. Created, you know, that communication with your inner artist, which boils down to guided meditations based on what you're feeling. And 
Who knows that better than you? Guided meditations in a group? Not so good. Well, I'd like to invite you all down to a swim in a lavish tourist place that I will be spying to you. Well, oh, some of the people were frightened of water. Had a bad experience with it. Especially at that moment, we're really running to address that. You know, drag them all down the same road. Usually that's, that's a lot of times what goes on with these therapists. The therapist is taking people to where they need to go. <laughs> that's such a temptation. That's why I love Arthur Gentle's approach. He has more than one therapist. And I don't support that. And has a very systematic approach in terms of what to focus on first and then expand. And, uh, yeah, that's a valid approach. Uh, it's uh, quicker, uh, but only for people who are strong enough to go through it. I think it's uh, the approach of I am C is more adaptable, less expensive, I hope you will stay on it, and uh, maybe uh, you can do it yourself, which uh, helps you gain a greater sense of personal empowerment. Um, you know, so you can do it like, like with them, you can do it on your own, train, train some things yourself. The trainers need to be experienced. The therapists need to be experienced. I wouldn't say they're valid. They may be a professional, but they're not a professional the way you need. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say in that case, save your pennies and go to the private sector in California. That's a lot of money. And uh, insurance will help you. They don't like long term real help. They like short term. Fix the symptoms, Scott. Of course. So there had to be another choice. That's what drove me uh, relentlessly. Still drive to me. Get out the message of the world. And make it so that it's my clinics, free and open source. It's, it's in our understanding, so you know, nothing hidden behind the curtain. This is what it is. And anybody who has experiences and, you know, things that they find uh, what are useful, these uh, parameters, are free to create a new distribution. People can have some choice. But um, focus on these things. Very important. Understanding them. Essential to the salvation of democracy. I find it to be the best. If we just find without us, it wouldn't be sad. The objective, understand that global warming is real. And uh, considering love flow, do your best to expand the company's so that that flow increases for you and those around you. And uh, that can be really hard sometimes. And so, if they say so slow and steady, what's the way You go over the off the curve and then you go to the end and say, yeah, yeah, stay in your comfort zone. Stay safe. As I like to say at the end of, uh, and expand that comfort zone. So you can um, 
I like to say at the end of my video, Namaste, because it means, uh, yeah, it might be different words to explain it. All of them true. <laughs> but the love flow, when I say that, that means the love flow in me. From that perspective, I'd like to honor that same name. That oneness of all, that um, oneness with the absolute truth that will always be somewhat of a mystery. If I found it out of you. And just before I move on, uh, I would like to mention that it's okay to take the absolute truth. It exists, and nobody knows what it is, and maybe never will. And personify it as the artist. Call it God, call it whatever you like. Nothing else. And, uh, yeah. I guess that's enough. But there is more. I hope that you will be discovering it. And you too. I'm like a scientist. You know, realistic. Someone who handles history well. And doesn't just appreciate the. Oh, wow. You know? True mystic. Not someone who's just wowed by the mysterious or feels mysterious themselves. People who understand mystery and try to explain it, <laughs> try, try to find out why it's there and what it is. That's a true mystic. If you want to know about real mysticism, ask the son. Neil Grass Tyson. Anyway, Rivadarchi and uh, have a good day. Well, have a fantastic day. Namaste.